Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Nursing with Ray. I am Ray Grace Truly. And if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Please make sure that you subscribe down below, turn on your post notifications so that you get notified when I post. And remember to like the video, comment, share, all that good stuff. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. I appreciate it. Um, and as you guys can tell by the title in today's video, I'm just going to be sharing some tips with you guys on how to ace AMP. Um, if you're new to the channel, just a little bit of a backstory. Um, my name is Rihanna. I'm a sophomore nursing student in Jamaica. And I got A's in both AMP 1 and 2. So I'm just going to be sharing five tips with you guys on how I got A's in anatomy and physiology. So just stay tuned. I'm going to leave some links in the description box below as well to some resources that I think would be helpful for you guys. So guys, when it comes to studying for AMP, the first tip that I want to give you is to break down the material into chunks. If you're trying to study everything all at once, it's not going to work. You're going to get confused, you're going to get overwhelmed, and nothing is really going to stick. So you really have to break the content down. You have to really figure out what is important, especially if you have certain textbooks. I remember when I was doing AMP, we had a textbook where the textbook just used to get everybody hideous. Like, it was just so much information, so much fluff, and not everything is important for you to know, honestly. You need to look at your course outlines and look at what is important for you to know. And if your textbook has, um, like, chapter summaries or, like, unit summaries, use those. Those are your best friend. Skip to the chapter summary. It's going to have points on what is important. Write those points down, and then you know that these are the things that you need to focus on and the things that you need to make sure that you know. When it comes to A&P, you know, anatomy is structure, physiology is function. So what I used to do when I was doing AMP is I used to break down the systems because we used to go system by system, right? So say, for example, we're looking at the respiratory system. I would break down anatomy and then I would break down physiology. So when it comes to anatomy, I would break down and list all the organs that are in that particular system and then I would go into the different tissues because you know you have organs and then you have tissue and that is how I used to do it I used to break them down and then when I break it down into the structures I'm like okay say for example we're looking at the trachea you talk about the structure of it so the trachea is a hollow tube with ring like structures around it it has cilia inside of it and they produce mucus or whatever just looking at the structure and then when we talk about the function we can talk about the function of the trachea is to carry air from our nose and our mouth down into our lungs it filters and cleanses the air using the cilia you know that pushes dust and bacteria and a lot of stuff out and the mucus just helps to secrete um, or the mucus just helps to what would you say lubricate the track so that when air is going down and stuff like that so you really need to break it down and then when you go deeper and you're looking into particular tissues and stuff like that when you break it down it's way easier for you to get the concept and way easier for you to understand and then when you break it down organ by organ tissue by tissue cell by cell and you understand and then you start to understand what the structure of each organ is, is on its own and the tissues that make up that organ then you can start to look at how different organs work together in a particular system to carry out the overall function of that system. So we know that the overall function of the respiratory system is to provide oxygen to the body and to eliminate carbon dioxide as waste. So when you start small, you work your way up so you can understand the whole thing. If you're trying to look at everything as just like a big picture, whatever, it's just not going to work. You really have to break down the concept. You have to know what's important and break it down into simpler fashion so that you can understand because it's really, really critical that we understand AMP because it is the basis of nursing. It is the foundation of everything that you're going to do. So it's really important that you do well in your anatomy. It's really important that you actually understand. Now, the next thing that I would say that you really need to figure out is your learning style. And I Maybe I should have put this at the first one, but whatever. Your learning style is very important because that is going to determine how you study and how you actually retain and memorize and understand the information that is being presented to you. So personally, I think nobody is just one set learning style. I feel like everybody's a mix, but you have a learning style that is like a little bit more suited for you. So for me, I'm a mix of visual and auditory and a little bit of, like I'm a mix of everything but I would say strongly I'm a visual learner strongly 
So you need to figure out what your learning style is and then you're going to be able to tailor your study methods to whatever your learning style is. So if you are a kinesthetic learner, you like to do things, I a good thing for you to do is to take notes because a lot of people by just writing out their notes it really helps me I love to take notes I take notes a lot just writing my notes out reading it and writing it and just like looking over it it just helps me to remember things but note taking is not for a lot of people so when you take notes if it doesn't help you just don't bother don't feel like you have to take notes because I feel like in nursing school a lot of people are like take notes take notes take notes but if taking notes isn't helping you in any way, shape, or form, then why waste your time on it? Use something else that will actually help you to memorize the information. And when you're taking notes, just don't write every single thing down. When I used to take notes, I used to do like that. I used to just look through my textbook, and I used to just write whatever the textbook has in there. But you're not going to learn that way. You have to pick out what's important out of the textbook, and you have to rewrite it in a way that it's going to be easy for you to understand. Because that that is the point. Of writing notes. The point of writing notes is not just to copy what the lecturer has on the PowerPoint. It's not just to copy what is in the textbook. You get what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that you understand and rewrite it in a way that's going to make it even easier for your brain to understand. Or if you're a visual learner, concept maps are a really, really good thing for visual learners to use. Draw. When it comes to anatomy and physiology, draw out the systems, draw the organs, draw the structures. You know, if we're talking about the respiratory system, you know, um, draw the flow of air into the lungs, how, you know, gaseous exchange in the alveoli, draw everything, label things. It will help you to remember if you are a visual learner. And for my visual learners out there, I would highly, highly recommend Picmonic. Picmonic is actually a website and they also have an app that is for nursing students, medical students, and I think physical therapy, physiotherapy students. And what they do is they are a study app that helps nursing students with nursing school, basically. It uses space repetition to basically help you to remember all the concepts that you need to know. And Picmonic is an app that I readily use. I use it all the time. I swear by Picmonic. And honestly, it's just a fun app to use. When you're using Picmonic, you don't feel like you're studying. And it's for visual and auditory learners. Visual learners, you're going to look at the cartoons. If you're an auditory learner, you're also going to hear the sounds, the things that they say. It is so, so helpful. I have a link down below that I'm going to leave in the description box for you guys if you want to get a Picmonic subscription. And if you use this link, you can get 20% off your Picmonic subscription. If you're a visual learner, Picmonic is definitely, definitely for you. It's going to help you like so, 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 so much. If you are an auditory learner, it is also very, very good. If you're an auditory learner, listening to your lectures, re-listening to your lectures is also a really good thing. I know a lot of my classmates, they like to re-watch the lecture recordings and stuff like that, but that's just not really for me. But if you're an auditory learner, you can record your lectures, play them over, and just re-hearing the content will also help you, you know, to remember and stuff like that. If you're a kinesthetic learner, you learn by doing things, drawing, writing, you know, teaching. They say the best way to learn is to teach. A lot of times when I'm trying to remember content, I just go and I start to teach it to somebody. I may not even fully understand it myself, but I'm going out and I'm teaching to somebody. So that is also a good way for you to retain information. Now, the third tip that I have for you guys, I was speaking about repetition, is using flashcards. I highly, 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 highly recommend flashcards. Whether you want to make them yourself or you want to use the ones online, probably if you're a kinesthetic learner, making your own flashcards would be very helpful for you. But if you like to use online flashcards, you can definitely use Quizlet. I swear by Quizlet too because Quizlet is so amazing because they have the flashcards on there with the concepts, the questions that you get. And don't tell nobody I told y'all this. But a lot of times, your lecturers will give you questions, and all the questions are on Quizlet. I never tell you that, but a lot of times, the questions will be on Quizlet, guys. So, literally, Quizlet is the plug for A&P. Like, I'm telling you, go on Quizlet, study the flashcards, you know, and repetition, 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 repetition. It will begin to stick. I highly recommend flashcards. Uh, when I just started doing AMP, I used to make my own flashcards. If I had them here, I would show them to you guys, but I moved them. 
um i started to make my own but then i realized that i got really lazy i didn't want to have to be writing out flashcards and stuff like that so that was when i started using quizlet and quizlet is very helpful because you even have people who make flashcards based on the various textbooks so you can actually look for the textbook that you're using and you can you know make or study the flashcards from that one seal my cat <laughs> all right go on <laughs> But yeah, flashcards are also a really, really good way for you to study for um, anatomy and physiology. Now, the fourth tip that I would give you guys is don't sleep on your assignments. Don't sleep on your assignments. And when I say don't sleep on your assignments, I mean like don't underestimate them. When you're doing your assignments too, a good way for you to gauge what you actually know is don't try to look up anything off the bat. Look at the assignment, see what you can do right off the bat without looking up anything, without googling anything, without looking at your notes, without looking through the text, with nothing. See what you can actually recall and then you'll know what you know. And then for the questions that you don't, you can go to your textbook, you can go to your notes, you can go to Google and then make sure that you understand and then you can complete your assignment. Another thing is just don't sleep on your homework. Do your homework. The certain questions that are in there, even after you've done assignments, revisit them. Make sure that the questions that you weren't sure of before, that you're sure of them if you were to ever see them again. Even your exams, you can revisit your exams after you've done them. Make sure that the questions that you got wrong, that you can go back and you know what the answers are for the next time because you can use those for your final exam. Yeah, even after you've done your exams, just make sure that you can go over back, you know, with the questions and the questions that you probably got wrong make sure that you know what those answers are for the next time so just don't sleep on your exams don't sleep on your assignments and just make sure that you do your absolute best to try to understand know the way that they were the questions you have to really understand what the questions are asking a lot of the time so that's also something that you really need to focus on and last but not least i'd say form study groups study groups are a big help um i mean study groups work for some people they don't really work for some but Mm -hmm. I've had good study groups and I've had bad study groups. You just have to have study groups with people who are actually willing to work and actually willing to do something. Not people who are going to be, you know, lackadaisical and not really do anything. People who are actually willing to work. Study groups will really, really, really help you. And that's basically it for my five tips. It was the nothing profound. You just really have to be able to put in the work and know what works for you in terms of studying. Put out the effort. Collaborate with your classmates. What you don't know, somebody else is going to know. What you know, somebody else may not know. So you always be willing to, you know, share information, help each other out, you know. And A&P will really not be that bad once you take the tips into consideration. And as I said before, guys, you know, you really want to make sure that you do well in A&P because it is going to be your foundation course for the rest of nursing school so you really want to make sure that you understand put in the effort it's not that hard you just have to really understand take the time if you don't understand something that your lecturer is doing don't be afraid to ask them if they're a lecturer that's really like unapproachable ask a classmate google's always there youtube is always there youtube is a really good resource because you have people on here that teach the different nursing um topics and stuff like that registered nurse rn um some other good uh youtube um nurses on youtube like i'm gonna leave some links in the description so you guys can figure it out but i'm telling you a and p it's not that bad you just really have to apply yourself and be strategic about it and you can be successful so if you like this video please be sure to leave a like please leave a comment down below make sure you share this video with somebody and subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys in the next video bye